What's good? What's going on, workload? Workload as usual. You know me. It don't stop. Just finished dropping the kids off at school. Okay. How's everything going with them? You bought them some good sneakers this year? Listen, they drained my pockets top of the year. And, you know, they've been doing good in school aside from uh, my oldest, uh, his Spanish. He, he got He got like a D in Spanish. And it's like... Even though we not Spanish, we are Belizean, and your last name is Mejia. So you should be passing that class, you know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Especially living out in, like, California, like, you got to. You got to. And his best friend is Spanish, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man, get that done. Yeah! His name is Andy. Uh, good, good kid. Straight A's, everything. Really good kid. We know how that goes. Like, you know, when you speak Spanish, like naturally like your family speaks it it's a different spanish than when you learn it in school so true true i can understand true true no that, that that's that's real that's real but they've been good though you know uh doing gaming my youngest you know he always cooking and eating at the same time so that's cool <laughs> just keeping them afloat you know what i mean that's cool what about you what you been up to design call i'm working on a new project that um i'm going out to new york to work on this weekend so that i got my hat dropping with hat club next week tuesday um was that what you just posted yeah that hat is fire thank you to buff and brock that, yo that's I'm fire as soon as i, I saw it I, as soon as i saw it, the first thing that came to my mind was like yeah blue jeans Tim's, it works. Yep. yep. <laughs> it works. <laughs> the idea for the hat, like, once, and the full story hasn't even come. What's crazy though is like, I didn't even drop the design or anything, and people were like, "Yeah, I need it," and I'm like, "Dang, they ain't even seen the design yet." And then when I posted the cartoon, people were like, "Oh yeah, I need it," and I'm like, "You ain't even really see the design." <laughs> and then when I dropped the design, everybody's like, "Oh yeah, I need it," and I'm like, "Wait till you." hear the story behind it i think it's gonna really resonate so that should be dropping this week and it's super limited so people are gonna be mad but i got yeah. something else coming for me. yeah I'm, I'm gonna try to cop mine early man because that's a that's the I'm, I'm starting to get into um you know at well i've always been supporting other businesses in terms of like fashion shirts things like that but mm -hmm. i'm now starting to incorporate that a part of my content for my YouTube channel. So it'd be dope okay. just to get some one-off pieces that people don't really have. I'm with that. Yeah. And I could absolutely see this hat being resold. Like, what's crazy, there's actually like a resale market for fitted. It's crazy. I never mm. knew it was that deep until one of my really close friends, uh, his name is Manolo. Uh -huh. He is a sneaker, he's a sneaker guy, but he's also a fitted guy. And he's like, fire designer that's where i get a lot of my inspiration from and right. a lot of his hats are like being resold on ebay for like crazy amounts of money and stuff so that was my first time really noticing that there was a resale market for fitted right. and i have a feeling that my hat is probably going to be resold like, i really feel like it well man listen the way you be posting all types of shoes and everything People, somebody just want to just go in your closet and just go shopping for sure. Yeah, they definitely could. <laughs> they definitely was, could. Yeah, I know. It, it was funny because, you know, I, I seen, it was like a, a quick story that you posted where you was like getting emotional off of going through your closet. And I was thinking, I'm like, yo, everybody who's, who who's like big on fashion, they go through that. Like how I go through it with, with electronics, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm always reorganizing rooms and reorganizing storage, you know, just for all the equipment that I've bought over the years, you know what I mean? But yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure how y'all be you be buying sneakers, it's like Jesus, trying to find one specific thing in the midst of all of that, that's crazy. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> 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 How the music coming along? Music is coming along. So I was waiting to get some stuff done with this hat and, and do that rollout. And next I got this, this single that I'm working on. It's called Limo Tent. 
Let's get it. So I'm going to start working on the visuals and all that stuff. Where I just want to, you know, you got to do one thing at a time. Yeah. When you're a, when you're a one woman band. So, you know, I have a team and everything, but I'm, I'm one of those people I want to be hands on. So right. I want to be a part of the process and it really gets me the opportunity to like dive into like my creativity yeah. by being a part of the, the marketing process or the video ideation process and all of that. So, you know. Yeah, it, That's it, be next. It, it, then at the end of the day, it's like you want to be able to have your eyes on it at least last before it goes out. You know what I mean? You know, I've worked with so many different teams when I, you know, like when I work with different artists or even just clients and companies. And, you know, some people may have a great, great idea, but it might ne- not necessarily be the type of messaging that you're looking for. And you know mm-hmm. you gotta touch it real quick and see how how is this gonna work out. So I agree. I agree hundred percent. Yeah, you gotta be. You can't just allow other people to to execute your vision for you without you having to have something to do with it. Like you have to put your spin on it because it's ultimately right. coming from your brand. And I think like when you think about like some of these other like fashion houses that have gotten into trouble for you know certain posts and certain like things that they've done right i feel like it's because they don't have the right people doing the final checks and they're just relying on somebody to get the vision you yeah know? yeah and you just really have to take yourself out of it and you have to like really pay attention to who you're trusting behind the scenes like you have to yeah uh, but is there is there one particular person because you know some people have it some people don't is there one particular person that you allow to override your final thought for any reason it ain't got to be something specific but is there one person that's like okay out of everything we don't went through i'll leave it up to them to make that final call or if i make a final call and they say no you should do it like this and is do you have a person like that I have a person that I will listen to, mm. and I'll take their. So sometimes, I guess maybe it's because I'm a Leo. I don't know, but we're very. I'm very bullheaded, and I only. No, <laughs> I you're only a Leo. That makes sense. Like, yeah, like I'm like no, I, it's my way, or you can hit the goddamn highway. But right. there is one person in my camp that I listen. Well, there's about two people that I listen to their opinions. Right. And. A lot of times I'll inquire, I may not agree 100%, but I'll be open to listening to what they have to say. Mm-hmm. And I may incorporate certain bits and pieces if it makes sense or if it's doable. But then there might be some things that is just like, eh, that's not really doable or I don't really like vision. But I will at least hear, hear them out. Right. For sure. <laughs> but ultimately, the decision is mine. Right. Especially I- if I'm paying for it. Now, if somebody else <laughs> paying for it, that's different. But if it's coming out of my pocket, I definitely... Right. Got to be all right with it, you know? I have one person. One person that I allow to override. And I and, and for this reason, me, I'm very passionate at everything I do. From making music to doing business. Even when I'm in meetings, like, call me when it's time to really get busy. Like, actually get the work done, create, you know, the the vision, put the vision together. So I'm very passionate. So the reason why I have one person to override my last decision is because I know that in some cases, I'm okay with dying on the sword. I'm okay with, like, no, this is what I want. This is what I see in my head. And I'm okay with that. But... This one person, which is my business partner, by Drew, he's the one that can see it from the other side in terms of like, what's the long game here? Yeah, you it's good right now and it'll work and it may get you everything that you want. But what's the long game? Because is this the you take this deal and then they'll never work with you again? You know, you take this opportunity and then you don't have anything after to coincide with that and keep it going who knows so I, I listen to his counsel and, and plus he's my mentor anyway just on 
when I was, you know, a rapper at one point in time and becoming a producer, you know what I mean? He always critiqued a lot of the things that I did from that angle. And, you know, him being 25, 30 years in the business, I trust his judgment to say, hey, and, and a lot of times it's like, you know, Rob, you good with this? Okay, let's roll. Let's make it happen because financially it's good, creatively it's good. But then there's some times where it's like, okay, creatively it's good, but hold on, we need to structure out some other elements that may be beneficial for other people on the team. So I, I, I allow that one person to to override a decision because I know at the end of the day, he, he looking at other things that I may not see. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, it takes years for to even develop that type of understanding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that's true. Mm, this is crazy. And to develop that kind of relationship, too. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because at the same time, it's like, as much as I would die on my own sword, it'll be the same thing for a decision that he makes that we're going to roll with because he going to roll with what, what I'm on. You know what I mean? That's what makes local astronauts. That's what makes, you know, what we do and how creative we approach things. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, mm-hmm. excited for that. No, so. Now, I, now I seen you. First off, kind of angry at you, kinda. It's your fault, but it's not your fault. What I do? You be at the Chicago Sky Games, man. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna be in the building. <laughs> you gotta pull up. I gotta pull up, man. Listen, Angel Reese, my favorite player. She ill. I'm mad that she injured right now, but it's okay. It's the end of the season. Yeah, and it's like, you know what? Let her get injured now so then she can spend the offseason getting back right. Yep. And, you know, she did her thing. Like, she absolutely proved herself. And she, like, to see her in action, to see her in real life, like, that is a young team. Right. Unfortunately, they're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna make the playoffs. Playoffs, right? right. But if they can get it together, which I feel like they can, they're gonna be a great team. Like, yeah. they really, really are. They're, they're, I mean, they're great now, but again, they're super young. They have a lot of rookies, you know. So during the off season, hopefully, they can, you know, really become more cohesive. And then right. next year, I really think they're gonna do really well. I, I, I'm excited for the stories that come from these women that's playing, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, the, the Asia Wilson's, the Kaylin Clark's angel Reese's like they really, they really got ESPN. Like, yo, we need to cover these games for real. And then, yeah. you know, I've heard, cause I, I've been to a sparks game, but that was like years ago. And, you know, I just heard like the camaraderie inside the stadium is really dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, People be having a good time there. You know what I mean? I've seen yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen certain people like go on IG Live and be on live while they're watching the game because they really want people to understand that this is the part of our culture too. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. me, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, yeah, like like I watch WNBA games, it'd be more exciting to me than the NBA games. Keep it a hundred, you know what I'm saying? Like Yeah. They're more scrappy. That's right. That's one of the things I love. Like they, they might not talk. But they're absolutely scrappy, and, and they're absolutely gonna get in that dirt and, and do what they gotta do. They talk a whole lot of junk. Whole lot of shit. They, they be talking shit. Yeah, they do. Like it's just, it, they are the epitome of what the game is supposed to be. And I've always said that about the WNBA. Even myself, being an old washed up <laughs> basketball player, like one of the things they always taught us was to be scrappy. Right. Oh, 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 you used to ball. I used to, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I have uh, a jumper still, though. My that makes still nice. sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, I didn't know that. Jumper still, still, still me. Still, still got that jump shot. Court. You gotta come. You, you gotta come to the complex with us at Baron Davis, and, and, and they be playing this crazy ass game of horse with a with a bunch of people. Craig Smith from the Clippers and. We all be in there. Listen, I can't play sports a lick, but I'll shoot some jump shots. You know what I'm saying? We be in there playing horse. That should be fun. You know, I have a crazy story. 
So in college, I used to coach basketball camp. So oh. Avery Johnson, who used to play for the Spurs, yeah, yeah, he used to have a basketball camp that he called All Pro Hoops Camp, uh -huh. and um, he would do one because his 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 agent was my mom's boss's son. Oh. So they would do a clinic every year at ECC. ECC um, was the Erie County Community College in Buffalo, okay. right? Okay. So every year they would do it, and I would work there as a coach, but I would coach the little kids. Right. So every, you know, the one thing about all the road hoops camp is they would have different NBA players come in and do a clinic. Right. So this one time they had Steve Kerr come in. And so Steve Kerr shot, of course, it was a shooting clinic or whatever. You know it. And he was like, oh, we're going to play horse with all the coaches, right? Mm -hmm. I was maybe like seven coaches or something, maybe like seven. So I was, of course, a part of that. I was the last person standing, the last coach standing against Steve Kerr. Obviously, Steve Kerr beat my ass. Right. <laughs> the fact that I was the only... That's fire. And I was a woman. Everybody was like low key hating, like damn. And then I ended up getting a pair of sneakers that Avery signed. He signed up because at the time he was signed with Reebok, and he signed me. Uh, he, he autographed a pair of sneakers for me and gave them to me. I fire. unfortunately don't have the sneakers. I, I swear to you, I wish I still had them because they would be in a in a case right, right. now. So, what happened to them? Well, I don't know if you heard the story, but one of the things that have happened to, you know, why I don't have any of my sneakers from my childhood is that my grandmother had a fire. Oh, and, wow, yeah. And a lot of my things were destroyed. Wow. So, uh, between that, between, like, you know, my grandmother had dementia and mm -hmm. just, you know, didn't really have an opportunity to take care of anything or whatever. So, right. I lost all of that stuff, like pictures, yearbooks, sneakers, right. like all of that stuff. We had to, like, either it was destroyed or we had to throw it away. So, I lost a lot of that stuff. Yeah, no, I hate, I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure that that really makes you on point with collecting things and just preserving things now, you know what I mean? For uh, sure. And I just, I, so if you ever were to come to my house, right, mm -hmm. which you're more than welcome to come to my house, but my house is very artsy. Like right. I have, I, like I was telling one of the people, one of the guys from uh, the sky the other day, I was like, if you come in my crib, my crib is very artsy. It's like, you walk in here and I've got all kinds of tchotchkes. Like right. I've got all kinds of stuffed animals and all kinds of cool stuff from all the places that I go to. I'm a collector and I'm a collector of, of memories. So Facts. if I ever have a kid, they can see that I have, I usually get a stuffed animal from every city that I visit from the airport. Mm -hmm. Like I usually get one thing and I keep it so that if I ever have a kid, it'll go in their room and they'll have like a, idea of all the places that I've been and in all the stories behind all the things that I've done in my life. So Very nice. Definitely a collector. That That's fire. You know, for, for me, like, you know, I lost a lot of my stuff from, you know, being evicted, you know what I'm saying? Like, real talk, like, mm. my parents work hard as hell, but it was just those times, like, really when they split up, yeah. when they got divorced, I had a chance to actually live with, my, live with both of my parents and then live with each of them separately. So I got yeah. all type of experiences. And, you know, when you go through those evictions, man, and they ain't got it. And it's like, yo, pack up the 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 things that you really need. And we're going to try to get a storage for everything else. And then the storage go bad. And then yeah. all that stuff is gone. You know, just went through that. But that made me, you know, really preserve a lot of the stuff that I have. Especially, you know, like you said, like memories and even pictures and stuff like that. Like even now in my house, you know, I have uh, two photo albums. So one of them is photo album of my boys, just them growing up naturally. And it's still ongoing thing because they're still growing and being crazy. And then the second one, which the second one, which I haven't started yet, um, but I got the book is. I'm going to I'm going to pretty much go through like all of my like pictures that I take with different artists and producers and executives, you know, people in the industry, because yeah. I really feel like I'll be living a double life. Yo, like it's mm -hmm. me being a, me being a dad and just doing my thing and then me in the industry. But I want for my kids, which they when they with me, they see. But I still want their kids to be able to see like, nah. 
your 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 grandfather was working. He was getting to it. You know what I'm saying? And I yeah. want to I want to put all of those photos. Go through my Instagram. Go through all of my you know my like Apple photos or whatever, and get those pictures, and then black and white them, and then put them on like some photo paper and put it in the photo album. So when you scroll yeah. through it, it's just you just see the memories and the history. You know what I'm saying? Yep, that's how we gotta do it. We gotta preserve it. Got to, got to. I've been thinking about time capsules too. Like, like, what would you put in the time capsule if you had to bury something? Which I'm probably gonna end up doing. But if you had to bury something, like, what what are like five things you would bury in your time capsule? Hmm, I would bury my hat. Okay. I would bury. Which one though? My new, my, my new one. Okay, okay, the okay. The one that I'm releasing on the 17th, because that's okay. the first one. Okay. And the second one ain't done yet, so this is the first one. So, I will put my hat in there. That'd be number one. Um, I will probably put a picture in there. There's this picture. I don't necessarily have it, but I feel like I can get my hands on it. But mm-hmm. a picture of me, my dad, and my grandmother. Nice. Uh, I will put that in there. But even if I couldn't, I would probably put a picture of me and my dad and me and my grandmother mm-hmm. in there. Um, I will put a pair of Air Max 97 silver bullets in there. Ooh, okay, okay. Because that's my ultimate favorite sneaker of all time. Fire. And let me think, let me think, that's what, that's three or four? That's four. That's four. And then I think I would put, hmm, looking around. You know what? I'll probably put one of my She Likes to Kick It t-shirts in there, too. So. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm with that, I'm with that. So all all of that is is just that's fire because I'm thinking like let's say if a kid if they dig up the time capsule and a, and a kid that said like uh thirty seventy two, however you're supposed to say that year, was to get that, they'd be like, Oh shit, this is the swag that was happening in in, in twenty twenty four, you know what I'm saying? That's lit. That's lit. What I, for me, I would, okay, so I would definitely do this. I would get like a sheet of paper front and back, and I would write all of like the slang words and sayings that I, that I, that I would say throughout my whole lifetime. That's for sure. I would definitely do that because it's so much old Brooklyn slang that niggas don't use no more that I got to put in there. And then it'd be, it'd be other shit like, and it may not even be slang, but it, it, it may like be a phrase that uh, that's a part of my life. Like, for instance, there's this thing that I call cups and ice, right? It's called cups and ice. And what that really means is it's a code word for we finna turn up in the studio. We finna make these records, but we also finna get some bottles, finna get some drink, somebody roll up. Weed here, get the candles, light the candles. I, I mean, I like to like the French vanilla and all that. Burn the candles, set the ambiance, lower the lights, and let's get to the music. But we do that a lot. Like when I was making records for Cali Swag, we did that. We was making records for, mm-hmm. you know, Joe Moses and, you know, TF. Like that's that's like our thing. You know what I mean? So I, when, every time I say Cups of Ice, everybody know what it is. Like we about to really kind of turn this into a low-key party. But little stuff like that, like things that I remember, things that I would, you know, tell my kids that they still remember. I would put all of that down and just, you know, hopefully somebody in the year 4073 can decode it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'll also put uh, all my all my favorite recipes that I like cooking, I like making. I'll definitely put mm-hmm. that in there. Um, uh, there's this particular picture. Um, that I took um, on, on Willie B. Ave in, in Brooklyn um, that it's just a dope picture. It's just me in Tim's and shorts uh, with my hair all the way out. I look ugly as shit, but it was it's a dope photo. It, <laughs> and it says, it says so much without saying anything. I'll put that in there. And the last thing I'll add in there is... Uh, uh, Raekwon purple tape. Niggas gotta, they, they got, they gotta enjoy that. Oh yeah, they need to know that. Yeah, they yeah, need, yeah. they need that. Now, I feel bad. I didn't put any of my music in there. You didn't put no music in there. I mean, I didn't put I my music, but I gotta put the purple tape. <laughs> I 
tripping. You gotta put what well, you, you can add. That's the sixth one. That's the sixth one. Six yeah. one. Masking gloves, CD. You know it. You know it. How how long how long ago was that? That was like two three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you so you are due for another one for sure. It is time. It is absolutely time for love is the first. It was crazy because the, f- the first time I heard your music, uh, I think a, a, a dose sent it to me. I was like, yo, yo, you definitely got to work with this girl, Tiana. She fire. You know what I'm saying? She be she be, uh, she be, be singing over some gritty shit. And I'm like, send that shit over. He know me. I do my homework. Send it over to me. And mm-hmm. when he sent it, I'm like, oh, she really uh, going up over this gritty shit for real. And, and <laughs> like... Like that shit right there is like that's special. Like, and then I start thinking about like you rapping over like uh, uh, I'm, I mean singing over uh, like Ghostface beats and stuff like that from like Iron Man or or uh, like Nutmeg from um, Supreme Clientele. So I, my brain was just going, and I was like, okay, definitely got to cook up something with you for sure. Uh, and, and then the it's vivid. So like the relationship things that you're explaining, you know, the feeling, like, even if it's just dope chill shit, like, you got range, you know what I'm saying? You get to play with a lot of, a lot of different elements. And, and, and I've still only um, witnessed probably 31% of what you can really truly do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, no, I'm, I'm anxious. I'm anxious to hear all the new stuff. It's hard. It's just hard. One of the things, like, when I was talking to so Q is one that is my writer um, and my creative director nice. and a lot of things. Um, and you, you met Q before. Yeah. And like, well, virtually. Mm-hmm. And when we were talking about working on Love is the First, the, the one thing I said that I wanted to do differently from this album, Asking Love, was I want to sing more. Right. And in Masking Love, obviously I sang, but it was not, I didn't really get a chance to showcase my, my range. Yeah, your range and the voice, right. So like, give that R&B like Masking Glove is a little bit more gritty right um, and I didn't really do a whole lot vocally and people can tell because I did do a little bit here and there but one of the main things that you'll be able to notice with Love is the First is that I played around a lot with my range mm-hmm. so and I got to really really sing like really do some R&B shit so I'm very excited about it. like one of my favorite songs on there outside of Limo Tent of course is um it's called I think it's called Love is the First mm-hmm. and the whole song I'm singing and it's it's like when you hear it it feels like the beginning of a movie oh. very very instrumentation a lot of instrumentation it's very vocal I can't tell you who's on it and who's supposed to be jumping on it but I can say is that it's it's a very 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 dope track and everybody that hears it is like yo what the freak is this because it's just, it's very emotional. It's just a really good song. But I got nice. to play with my range, and I really love that. Nice, nice. That's dope. Okay, now what? Now what's his name? Mm. The guy that you wrote the song about. Because I already know. I already know when you make records like that, that means if there's a guy. There's always a guy. <laughs> Honestly, there's I can't even say it was a particular guy, mm. you know, because when we talk about like when I talk about my heartache, it's not just about a particular one guy; it's about all of them. Right. And unfortunately, they all do some crazy, stupid shit. So we just not all. Don't, don't say all. Just say ninety-seven percent. Don't no, say all. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about for me, me personally. <laughs> there was at Everybody least one or two good ones. You know what's crazy is like they're my friends and we've never dated. Like I've never, a, a lot of my relationships, like my like boyfriends, like relationships, right. they just, no shade, nothing bad against them, but they just didn't work out. Right, but, but, but the friends. ended up being heartbreak. Right, but the friends that are good friends is an example of in due time you shall find. Hear me out. I'm not saying that all. I'm not one of those people that's gonna be like, "All men are dogs. All y'all suck." Like, no. Because I, I have some amazing guy friends that right. are just they. 
and what they, you know, how they are with their girlfriends or wives and the things that they do, the type of men that they are, I just, I'm like, yo, okay. Like, I know that they're out there. Have I met him yet? Probably not. But do right. I believe that he's out there? Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, I, I, I think because you have good male friends is the reason why the relationships don't last. And it's not that's not a bad thing. That just means that, you know, well, in, in my experience, let's just say for, for me, right? I really feel truly that, and, and, and let's take intimacy out the window. Let's throw that out the window for a second, right? I, I really believe that for me, like my uh, women friends are the true example of the right relationship. For the most part, like, of course, you got, you know, I have some crazy friends that just be doing wild shit. But then, like, my true, real good friends that are women, they're the example of what I'm usually going to end up thinking as the guideline to the woman that I want. And Mm -hmm. the way that they treat you, the way that they listen to you, man, it's nothing like a woman that's going to sit there and have a great conversation with you. You feel me? I look for that when I when I look for in someone that I'm dating. And if they can't give me that type of stimulation, just inadvertently in my mind, I'm already turned off. I'm already I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? So I so I feel like the better, you know, friends that you have that are natural good friends, the harder it is for you to stay in certain relationships. That's why I like, you know, men or women who don't have a lot of real friends, they end up dealing with bullshit in the relationships. You know what I mean? They just deal with it. You know what I mean? So I just feel like in due time, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they definitely have to live up to the type of good people that surround you. That's for sure. That's for damn sure. I can agree with you there. And then also, the, I can agree with you. Uh, uh, also all the weak niggas, you got to give them some love. They, they low-key need royalties off your record, you know what I'm saying, because of the things that they put you through. I, they got to pass that law. Foul niggas get royalties. Sorry, you should have been right. No, but I'm saying they lose the relationship, but at least they get some royalties because this line and this line here where he did you wrong, you sung your heart out, come on, you need at least like 3%. somebody to break my heart. That's wild. You kind of, I mean, it's kind of like a, it's on the back end. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like it's I on, it's like, on the back end. Like contribute <laughs> to your glow up after you destroy mine. Like, hell nah. Okay, but what, but what, but what if your blow up is you end up being a billionaire because of this heartbreak? Well, then they better, they better become disabled or something and they could be, I can, <laughs> Give to their charity or something. Oh my family. god! Um, I mean, listen, it, like, huh? and I wouldn't expect. I wouldn't expect for it. My dog is wilding right now. I wouldn't expect for them to give me a protection. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't expect that. What? Well, what? Well, he, he's kind of like a co-writer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of like a co-writer. Look, he developed the bad experience, which made you think about it, which made you write it. He kind of like a co-producer, co-writer. Who I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Same thing. Same thing for for a, 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 a R&B singer, a male R&B singer, right? What if a woman did him dirty, like Bryson Tiller, right? Bryson Tiller made all his songs because of one, this one woman. She should be able to get some royalties. No, she don't deserve it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, I try. I try. I both ways, it, for the men or the women, they don't deserve it. No, <laughs> like I'm not gonna give you a portion of my earnings, and you're the reason why I have to go through this therapy. Like that's crazy. That's like me paying somebody to like abuse me. You know what I mean? Right, right. Or like. If you kill me, I end up giving you money for me hiring a hitman to kill myself. Kill me. like, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, no, you don't deserve that. But, but, but what don't kill you? Made you stronger. Okay, what are we talking about? What are we on? 
I mean, I'm just like, what I get from dealing with you is the price that I pay for dealing with your shit. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I dealt with your shit and I utilized it to be my therapy to I use it as therapy to, to help somebody else or to help myself get through a certain situation or whatever <laughs> and then if I become a millionaire off of it that was my parting gift that is <laughs> crazy that is well, listen I I always thought about that because my brain is weird so I just I'm just always <laughs> in that mode but I'm like I'm like man when Mary J Blige is making all these hit records what if KC from Jodeci Got a percentage. What if he got a percentage? Wow, he probably would stop talking about heartbreak. Tell you that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Well, what? What? But what drive? What drives you musically? Like, when it comes to like writing and things like that, like, what drives you? Is it? Is it the pain? Is it the happiness? Is it the um, optimism? Like, what drives you when you're making music? I think for me. It, it's the song itself mm-hmm. it's the music. and that dictates the feeling that exudes from it right so when I write I listen to the song first like when I write on my own like if I'm not writing to an actual particular song it's more like a poetry based off of how I'm feeling in that moment right and I need to get it out whether it's a good thing bad thing you know whatever but if I'm writing to a particular song or whatever then it's based off of the music that's being played and it, it creates that synergy for me and mm-hmm. it develops that feeling the music itself does. Right, right. For me, at least. No, no, I, I believe in that. And and, and I, I love the fact that, uh, that you're open about, you know, the collaborative effort of you and your team writing these songs. I love that because that's just, you know, I, team records are the best records. You know what I'm saying? You know, sure. team records where people and come Jim together. And Dave and I mean, Masking Glove was a collaborative effort. Like to be honest, I can't take credit for any any of the writing on that for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Like that was just a bunch of just amazing writers, right. and just a team of people that really wanted this project to succeed. Right. Um, for Love Is the First, I did have some some say in different parts and pieces in the ideation and things like that but I can't take all the credit for that either I have to give that to Q as yeah. well um, even for Mask and Gloves you know so yeah. this, this was the idea that he came to me with and I was just like run that that sounds hard yeah, yeah. and we just kind of like created a lane you know like yeah. nobody like I'm in essence the female Nate dog Cause like yeah. nobody, there's really no woman out or any person singing really on that Grammy shit. Like I'm nobody you. is on that boom bap. Like there's nobody doing it, and we created a boom bap R and B. You know, that's and a real thing. That's a fact. It's wow. Like <laughs> so, you know, I can't take I can't take all the credit for that. I would be I would be remiss if I did that. No, it, it's dope. And then you know, it's refreshing because. I think, and I'm not speaking for all, you know, you know, men and women, but I think sometimes in R&B, the thing that stops certain people from listening to, you know, just certain levels of R&B is because, like, just for just for who they are, they may not identify with the actual production per se. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think that's the reason why Mary J. Blige stuck out so much is because although she was singing her heart out about real relationship shit, the beats was so hard that niggas was like, mm-hmm. nah, man, I got to play this. I got I to gotta play this in the whip. You know what I'm saying? Like, So it resonated. And I think you have that same element. Like, you playing gritty shit that that a... That a, a, a you know, a, a grimy hip hop artist like like Flea Lord to hop on. Shout out to Flea, you know what I mean. And the beat is like that, but then you coming over the top with the real singing and the real storylines of what's really going on in a relationship. Play that all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? Like with that, I love that. Exactly. I mean, it started. I mean, it all started from what like. 
when she said me saying some crazy stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, And it's like we took that and we created, you know, a lane from it. Mm-hmm. And so shout out to to West as well. Yeah, shout shout out to Gus, my guy, man. They they both my guys. I just wish they, you know, squash all the shit. You know what I'm saying? In due time, in due time, I, I, I'm hopeful. Yeah, same. same. Make it- Cause they're, they're they're just two you know two great guys. And it's a, it's a lot of you know our community of you know artists is, is vast because you know it's so many of us that travel. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. You coming to L.A. Then you know like T.F. are coming to New York, and then you know Conway will pull up in Atlanta. Like everybody is just out there working and just creating a great community of just dope hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? And I love the fact of when I look at certain projects, you know, I'll see your name, I'll see other names. When I look at your project, I see names of people that I, that, that that's dear to me. And I, I, I think that that's dope, man. We need to continue to do that, you know what I'm saying? Especially, you know, b- bigger records, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be no pop shit, not at all, but just bigger sounding records and even with you on hooks like you need to go through a whole run of like nah I'm just blazing everybody hooks right now I'm gonna give y'all a one off and just knock all type of shit out like you know what I mean we need that we definitely need that that's the one thing these rappers don't do they don't have no hooks yeah or they execute them and it just and sometimes they're cool like I'm not no shade at all but sometimes you just need another element to bring you over the top like right. do you want to be do you want to be remembered or do you just want to do some hook right and, exactly and if you look back at all of the the hooks with the actual R&B singer on it those are iconic songs those are classics all I need like, Mary J Blige, Blige and Method Man like, right I got a song out but you know what I'm saying like if you're not a singer like you shouldn't be you know what I mean like hire the professional to make your song better Right. But who am I to tell people their creative direction for the song that they create? You know what I mean? So, you know, if you feel like you don't need it, then cool. You know, man, respect either way. But I know I can elevate it, you know? Right. So. We we have you for that. So, so, so what's next up? I know you got a lot with fashion. You're ambassador of so many things. You know, what's next on your plate for you? Not just business-wise. What's next on your plate emotionally and in your life, your life balance? I'm going to ask that because last time we talked, you was exhausted. Oh, absolutely. And I'm still exhausted. Right, right. But what, one of the things that I have been doing a much better job of doing is prioritizing my rest. Right. And when I rest, it is literally excuse me, no, nothing. Like, I'm in front of the TV watching old episodes of Sex in the City. That's like my comfort zone. My that comfort shit is fire. Or, or uh, Criminal Minds, which is another one of my... Yo, wait, hold up. Wait, you don't know nothing about Criminal Minds. Stop. What? Stop. Let me tell you. You don't know nothing about Criminal Minds. Let me tell you, Patty Rap. My grandmother put me on to... Criminal Minds, and oh. how I got into it is, I graduated, so when I graduated from grad school, mm-hmm. I, um, obviously my family came into town, um, because I graduated from, uh, upstate, in Westchester, basically, I nice. went to Manhattanville, and so my family came down from up to it, and my grandmother and my great aunt were staying in one hotel room together, mm-hmm. so me and my friends were supposed to go out, <laughs> like, we were supposed to hit the streets, go shopping, you know, whatever. And I was like, yo, I gotta stop by and see my grandmother and my great aunt real quick. Right. And, you know, at least, you know, tuck them before they leave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were in there watching Criminal Minds. And I'm like, what are y'all watching? And my grandmother was like, oh, this is Criminal Minds, girl. You gotta watch this. This is good. And I'm like, this is scary. She was like, it's not scary. She was like, it's good. Good. And I started watching it. We sat there. We, didn't, we never went out. Me and my friends never went out. Mm-hmm. We never hit the streets. We sat there and watched episode after episode. 
and we were just sitting there talking, talking to my grandmother. So it's almost like it's a comfort show for me, but it also is almost like a connection right. to my grandmother. Um, and I just lost my grandmother this past December. No, so my condolences. Kind of year. Thank you. That was my girl, man. So any opportunity that I have to, to somewhat be connected to her or my dad is like, I don't pass up that. So, um... Definitely one of those shows that I watch all the time. Yeah, they got, listen, they got mad seasons. I love the dynamic between yeah. all of them. You know what I'm saying? So you have, you know, the, the the psychologist who's breaking down the serial killers, their, their, their process and their intent. And then you got the other uh, psychologist who, who is a lot more nerdy about the approach. He's breaking down just the layout in the book of serial killers. And then you got yeah. Shorty with the glasses that she's the tech nerd. Garcia. She going crazy. And then you got the other, the, uh, I, and then, uh, yeah, right. And then, uh, then um, yeah, his, yeah, yeah. Her name is Garcia. And then you got, uh, what's his name? He, he always making sure he show her love. You know what I mean? He called her baby girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, Shamar Moore, which he, yeah. which that SWAT show, I watched that too, that was fire as well. Man, SWAT is good. SWAT and is SWAT really is good. And what I love about Shamar Moore, right, is the fact that, and his name is Derek Morgan on the show too. Chris yeah, yeah, Derek Morgan, Morgan, yeah. I know him as Hondo, big Hondo, you feel me on SWAT? What I love about Shamar Moore is the fact that he always plays like, a strong black man. He might be a single black man. He might be somewhat right. flawed or whatever, but he's a man of the community. Right. And he always stands for something within the community. Always. Right. And I, and I, I think he picks those roles intentionally. And I love that. I love that. Like, I, Ando might be a little flawed when it comes to, like, relationships with women or whatever. Right. But he's always going to stand for them. He's always going to stand for his community. He's always gonna ride out, and and I absolutely, positively love every character for the most part. Ever since, ever since he was in Young and the Restless. Ooh, okay. you going back? Okay, okay. You, now you trying to show your age. <laughs> you showing your age? My what you doing? Used to watch it. My grandmother used to watch it, so whenever I would be with my grandmother, we right. used to always watch the old reruns and all that stuff. And I'm a little girl at the time watching it, but my mom used to watch General Hospital faithfully. Oh my God! Young and the Restless and the Bold and the Beautiful. Bold, oh, the Bold and the Beautiful. Oh, that was crazy. Listen, the one thing I can say about those soaps, man. My mom used to be like, "Oh, I gotta watch my soaps." One thing I can say <laughs> is I be dying laughing when before they go to commercial because it's always like, "Hey, so hey, woman, yeah, hey, woman, get away from me! I, I don't want you anymore." Yeah, but well, you don't want me, but you would want this baby that's coming. And they give that look, and then they go to commercial. I'll be sitting there oh, like, yeah. why am I in here watching this shit with my mama? I was supposed to be out <laughs> the streets going crazy. You know what got me lately? So I haven't watched them in a long time. So I'm trying to wean myself off of them. Mm. But like on Instagram, they have like these little things called real short. Uh huh. Yep. And they're like real, you know, real short movies. They're probably like maybe 30 minutes. Uh -huh. But they're like a little movie, and they're all fucking terrible, right? They're uh -huh. all terrible. You pretty much know it's a billionaire heiress. Oh, dude. She, I know what you're talking about. She's a billionaire, and her parents don't want her to marry this guy, but she's in love with him, and then the guy gets pregnant by uh, an alien, and there's all this crazy yep, shit. Yep, yep. But I am so obsessed with them, and I think that's like our modern day, day soap operas. You can't stop and watching it. I freaking, I can't. I'm like, look, I watched one. The last one I watched was like a couple of weeks ago, and it was so freaking good. I was like, why am I watching? I know how this is gonna end, but I don't care. And the acting is horrible. It's like, terrible, and, and it's, it's like, mostly white people. I watched one where it was this lady. She was married to this guy. And she she deliberately she's like a billionaire and she's like one of the, she with one of the top families in the world one of the richest families in the world, but she made herself appear like she was broke for two years yep. to be with the guy to see what he was gonna do. He ended up leaving her, going with this other girl. They go into this whole banquet and she got problems getting in. Then at the end, she ended up being who she said she was. And it, like I'm sitting there watching it on my phone and I'm like. Why am I not turning? It's TikTok. 
All I got to do is just swipe my thumb up and it's over. But I can't seem to do it. it. Every time I eat it, then it's like, oh, pay $10 and you can finish watching. And I'm like, okay. It's like a freaking crazy Right. Crash. But it is so freaking good. Like, I can't, <laughs> like, I can't stop watching. It's like, it's like a car crash. You got to turn your head. Right. You, you, know my, you know my guilty pleasure when it comes to content? So, don't mind me. I'm a Capricorn, so I get like this. My guilty oh, pleasure God. is literally watching those military videos where the the uh, the uh, people come home from the military and see their kids and their wives and things like that and everybody start busting out crying i'll be sitting there i'll be sitting there on my phone watching it crying my eyes out i'm just sitting there like why why am i torturing myself like this but it's beautiful it's, it's i love it that's like wholesome that's like wholesome right i'm not too bad and and, and, and all of these things like it helped me make records. It helps. It helps me identify with yeah. certain ideas that I want to play with. Even with me making beats, like when I get into an emotional state, you can hear it in my production, and I feel like that at some point in time, somebody will resonate with that for some reason. Even when I'm watching action movies, you know, hearing certain explosions and certain things helps me get into a mind state of making certain types of records and. I love it. You know what I mean? That that's why I, I would watch anything from TV or whatnot. It's because I'm really just jogging my brain to what I could possibly do. LA is just full of planes going by. That's just what it is. I miss LA. I can't wait to go back out. Why? Don't miss it. What? I love it. Every time I come to LA, such a vibe. Dang man, they need some better hot wings out here. I I need to get them <laughs> lemon pepper hots out there where you at in Atlanta. Oh. That's all they have. That's all I want. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, it's like, wing, 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 wing. And it's like, oh, God. Take me, listen, I am probably the only person in American history that goes to the strip club, bypass all the girls that's trying to get me to pay for a lap dance, say what up to the DJ, go in the back to the kitchen, order a 20-piece lemon pepper hot with the fries and a drink, get my food and go sit in the back of the club, turn my head and eat the whole shit and walk out. <laughs> I literally do that. It's just, I love the wings. The food is the best at the strip club. Yeah, it is. And them girls not about to ruin my life, not about to have me coming out 10000 for no reason. We're not doing none of that. Yeah, that's just wild. If I'm promoting a record, <laughs> yeah. it might be different. You know, I got to respect people's hustle. Oh, yeah. No, I love it. Yeah. I'm just going for the wings. I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's wild. I absolutely... The strip club food is probably the best food. Oh, but my still, God. You have to go to Magic City, but everybody says Magic City's wings are, like, the best. I am yet to go. The last strip club I went to, I was with Red, and we went to... Um, we went to Onyx. And Onyx. The wings were good. Onyx is fire. Onyx wings were good. We used to go to the Flame. Flame wings is good. Like, I just mm-hmm. I have yet to go to Magic City. So, and that's crazy. I've been in Atlanta 11 years. Right. And I have yet to go. I've been, every time that I was supposed to go to Magic, something happened. I never ended up going inside. Right. You know, the the Flame is fire, too. I mean, Magic City, their they wings was good, but I ended up getting steak instead. instead. <coughs> Somebody told me to get the steak. I got the steak. I was already faded by then, so I can't really judge it. But I was full. I was definitely full. Uh, funny. <laughs> well, I don't want. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I already I already know you super super busy. It's cool. You call me on the line now, time. I finished my one call for the night. I got some stuff. In the truck that hopefully will be coming out really, really soon. Oh, it's like 11 o'clock over there. Yes, it is. It's 11 12. So I'm about to finish watching Criminal Minds. You already I'm know. Come on. You a little bit. Criminal Minds, I'm about to pass out. But uh, listen, Criminal Minds, NCIS, and Law and Order. That's my shit. Law and Order SVU or Law and Order? Hold on. See, now you're asking real motherfucking questions. I love you for that. <laughs> Hold on. Let me tell you. 
Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Uh, let me say this. Although I love criminal intent, the tears that I shed on SVU is different. It's a different beast. It's totally different. I love SVU. I watch that shit all day, every day. Even though, SVU is good. yeah, even, even though criminal intent jogs my brain, I love that. But SVU just got the and and I think they have the best storylines too because uh, yeah. between all of the characters. I think everybody down there in the precinct got a good storyline. And when they yeah. end when they end it off or a character is no longer on that particular uh, law and order, they end it well, they start it well. I think it's dope. You know what I'm saying? I I, I agree with that. But yeah, I can watch Law and Order all day. Like especially the old show, I'm also dating myself, but at the same time, like I'm not because they do they used to show like the old, old episodes. Uh-huh. The one with the guy that was in um the black dude, it was the black dude and the tall, skinny, older white guy. Yep, yep. I, I, and I, every time I think about that black dude, I always think he got a flat top on because he used to play in another movie with a flat top. And then he was also in Rent. Yep, yep. Facts. I just cannot think of his name. I want to say his name like William, but I don't know. His name could be Earl, for all I know. Yeah. But he was, those were the best episodes. Like, those were my favorite before, uh, I forgot who took over after them, but um, those were my favorite. And you know what other show I used to watch a lot? What? I used to watch Cold Case. Oh, see, I haven't watched that. You gotta watch Cold Case. And why I love it, you know, I'm, I'm like, I don't want to say I'm a history buff, but I like history. I like uh-huh. the story behind it. And one of the great things about that show, and I feel like it was a Jerry Bruckheimer production, too. Yeah, Jerry Bruckheimer, he, 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 he's smoking everything. Yeah. why somebody died and like what happened right and as they go back through time to figure it out and it's like a case that's like a like 50 years old 30 years old or whatever it was so good it was really 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 good written like it was written well that makes sense so you i would say go back and watch cold case yeah we definitely got especially yeah. once they got the black girl on there once they got the black girl on there i felt like it got a little better and I'm not just being biased because it was a black girl, but <laughs> it, it, just got, it just got a little bit better once, once they had a little, a little spice in there. Right. That's fire. Yeah, I love watching those things. It helps me so much on just making different type of records. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was one show. You know one show that I love? And this is just for just shit-talking pleasure. Uh, House. Oh, yeah, he was such a dick, though. He was a <laughs> dick, but he was great. He really was. It's like he going to talk shit about you and save your life at the same time. Wow. That was fire. Nah, we, we, we definitely got to link up. You know what I'm saying? Cook some food. I'll be in the kitchen. You put on the TV. We vibe. You work on some music. You know, full vibes. I, I'll be in Atlanta soon anyway. Keep it posted. I need some more of that, uh, what's it called? That you, uh, what did you make the last time? I think. I forgot. You made the, the salmon, the air fried salmon, and I've been trying to replicate it, and I can't. Oh, this, oh yeah, the salmon. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't play no games when it comes to salmon. I, I actually want to make this, um, I don't know, do you do seafood? But, like, aside from salmon? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I got this, uh, seafood chowder that I make. It's crazy. So it, it got um it got mussels, uh shrimp, um and uh like oysters, but it's chopped up really, really fine. And it's just like in this it's in this vegetable vegetable broth along with some uh uh clam juice. And it, this shit is just crazy. I'll send you a picture of it. This shit crazy. But, but I definitely wanna make that. It is wait, I'm with it. Just keep posted. That I shall. will be on LA at some point. Yep. Say no more. Either or, whether it's Atlanta or LA, you know, the same thing. I already know you want tacos, so you ain't got to say it. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, be good. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right.